older people and the exodus. Some of these study lessons I like to do are purely for me, and if others get something from it, great. Some of them I do for my children, and if anyone else gets some benefit from it, great. Um, some, some of them are general to help out others, things that I've kind of learned in trying to help them out. This one has a very specific audience, and I made this for a specific couple. Um, they mean more to me than they will ever know, and we've never met before, which is hilarious. That's how things work in this faith. And if anyone else gets benefit from this, then that's great. But I was told that by this couple that they were old and they would not be able to keep up and, you know, the exodus isn't for them. And my statement to that is not a chance. The creator of the universe, the one who has set all things in motion, has a full understanding of the people's health. More than anyone else on earth has an understanding of health, he does because he has made us. And before I get into the verse that's really a factor here, it's one of those things when they left for the Exodus the first time, you telling me there weren't old people there? Because I know that they were. And in fact, I can show you that one of them was about over 215 years old. The oldest woman that we know of in the Bible is Sarah. Not Sarah, the wife of Abraham, but Sarah, the wife or the, the daughter of Asher, who went into Egypt and came out of Egypt. And not only did she come out of Egypt, she made it another 40 years. She was there during the count of the second ex, on, the, on the, the second census. They still mentioned her at that point in time. Now you can say, well, how can that be? <clears throat> the, the leaders, you know, basically everyone over 20 had to die. It, those who were for the warriors had to. So if you weren't counted among the warriors and you were older, you didn't have to die. If you weren't a leader or anything. Sarah, being a woman, was excluded from that and she was able to survive past that. Um, now, did he allow her to go back into the land? I think he did. You know, the count on the second exodus or the second census was right before they went back to the land. <laughs> and so obviously she was very much elderly. Um, I think of MTOI and... Um, Rabbi Tom on there, who is in a you know wheeled vehicle at this point in time to, to get around. And there's not a chance that the creator of the universe who does all these miracles to allow us to get out of here doesn't have the understanding and the ability to get those particular people out as well. And so let's look at the verses in here that are really applicable. And we're going to find this in Isaiah 40. And I'm going to do, um, starting from verse, um, I guess I'll start from verse, I'm going to start from verse 27, but um, why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Uh, I'm just trying to get the flavor here. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is an everlasting God? the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. During the Exodus, those who were older and, and starting to get feeble as, as age is, is caught up to them, they're going to soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. It is not an issue. He's got this thing very well covered. And if you think I am elderly and um, not going to make it, well, let me tell you with, without question, not only will you make it, but you've probably not even lived half your life. Why do we say that? Because it says in Isaiah, um, 
so that the person who dies at 100 is cursed. You know, it's like, he's like a child. He's going to give us a longer life. Those people in our faith right now who are getting um, older, and I'm one of those who are getting older. I still have my strength right now, but I'm still getting older, as we all are day by day. Um, he's going to give us a longer life. So don't have any concern whatsoever. If the creator of the universe can open up a way for us to leave, I want to be careful how I say this thing. He's going to send an angel for us to come get us on that Passover. He's going to have a way for us to get back to the land. He has set up all these things in motion. He's going to bring everybody he wants to bring. And so it's not just a young man's game. It's just not. Um, without getting into a vision that I saw when I first when I came to faith, very shortly after coming to faith, um, there are those who are in the 144,000 who are a special class in the 144,000, and they are the leaders. Um, and they get to actually go up and eat with the Messiah. Now, the Messiah is still in spirit form during the Exodus. Okay? But they get to do that, to eat and drink in his presence. Um, it's an amazing thing because it was in the original Exodus. And they are the elders. They are the leaders. And, you know, being old is not a bad thing because if you're in the 144,000, you have a chance of being in that group which is just the ultimate of all special groups. Um, you know, as, as you see things a little higher each time, there's, there's less and less. And if there's two and a half to three million of us, could you imagine the glory to be in the top 70, 72 of us? Um, and that's gonna be some, for our leaders, our seniors, our elders. So an amazing little thing. But uh, again, to those who are um, more senior, don't think of it as a bad thing, because trust me, it's a great thing. And he's got you covered.